Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.5 and DECA Ironworks Simulations GF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to Tutorial 3, Air-to-Air -air Radar BVR Modes. BVR standing for Beyond Visual Range. These are the modes that you're going to use before you merge with a target when you're looking to make a longer range shot. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the air-to-air -air radar BVR modes video that I did in the F-16, uh, with much of the terminology and so on being the same, even some of the radar modes in fact, uh, but the GF-17 has a less capable radar. It's only going to pick out uh, fighter-sized targets out to about 55 nautical miles, uh, and it can only bug two targets in TWS. Uh, this is a pretty standard cap or intercept loadout I've got in the aircraft right now. I've got a centerline fuel tank. I have four times SD-10, which is the, the medium range BVR missile that the GF-17 carries. Uh, and I've got two PL-5 missiles on the wingtips. These are heat seekers, short range, very similar to early sidewinders. So first things first, let's go over the controls that we're going to be using today to control the radar. Uh, one of the first controls that we're going to need is the T1 switch. This is actually the master mode switch. It has positions for forward, which is intercept or air-to-air -air mode. Center, which is navigation mode, the mode that we're in just now. And if you push it rearwards, you go into air-to-ground. So let's go ahead and push it forwards. And confirmed for us on the HUD here is uh, intercept mode and TWS, the radar defaults to TWS. It also confirms the selected weapon, which in this case is SD-10, and it states that the weapon is ready. You'll see that for our multifunction displays, uh, it's given us the stores management system on the left, the horizontal situation display on the right, and the radar scope on the center display. Let's hide the stick for now, and let's focus down on the center display, because this is the one we're going to be using. Uh, to demonstrate the radar. So notice that there's an asterisk at the bottom of the radar scope. That means that it is our current sensor of interest. However, if we wanted to manipulate that, we would make use of the switch called S1. Uh, S1, when you push it to the left, will make your left multifunction display soy, as we can see here with the asterisk. Pushing it right pushes you to the right, and pushing it down gives you the center display. Um, the other switch that we're going to want to make use of today is S2, which is the sensor control switch. The sensor control switch uh, allows us in TWS mode to go forwards to increase range, down or aft to reduce range, and pushing it to the left will cycle modes. We have vertical, uh, sorry, uh, velocity search, range while search, and track while scan. Uh, pushing it to the right will cycle the different azimuth modes. We have 60. Oh, actually, it's not giving me any other modes in TWS. What about RWS? Yeah, in RWS we have 15, 30, and 60. Uh, in TWS it's only giving us 60, which is fair enough. And uh, the sensor control switch also has a depress, uh, and the depress will unlock a target or unbug it when you have one locked or bugged. We also want to make sure we have T5 mapped. T5 is the TDC, allows us to move the cursor, and it has a depress, and that's how you're actually going to bug or lock targets. So, let's start with TWS. TWS works in a very similar fashion to TWS in the F-16. Uh, main difference being that we can only bug two targets. So if I put my cursor over one of these targets just now and depress, I have it bugged. If I depress again, I'm going to get STT, as shown by the caption here. And STT works exactly the same as in the F-16. We're only updating that one target. I'm going to increase my range. Um, and we have information about the target in the bottom right. We have its current range, time to intercept, closure rate, and its aspect to us. I'm going to press uh, sensor control depress, or the S2 depress, and that's unbugged the target, and it's immediately put us into a 25 degree scan, uh, and I could actually push the push button to put us back into 60. Let's take a little look at the dual target track now. So if I, say, bug one of these targets here, Okay, he's currently bugged, and again, I have target information at the bottom right. I could then move my cursor over one of the aircraft in this completely separate group, 
depress there, and you'll note that I'm now in DTT, or dual target track. While I'm in dual target track, I have a primary and a secondary uh, target, the primary being the one here with the circle, and the secondary being the one here which is just an outline. Um, the information at the bottom right is for the primary. If I push S2 left, or sensor control left, I can flip-flop between these two targets. This would give me the ability to uh, bug one target, launch an SD10, flip-flop to the other, launch another SD10. These targets are only bugged, they're not locked, and so in this situation they're not getting RWR lock indications, which is quite useful. Again, I can press S2, or sensor control depress, and I dump the currently bugged target, and if I press it again, I dump the secondary target as well, and we're back to normal track while scan. Uh, and that's pretty much everything that you can do with TWS, with the exception, of course, of the ability to change the azimuth and change the bar scan. When you change the bar scan, note that you've got the top and bottom altitudes listed here. When you go to a three bar scan, uh, you can only do 25 degrees. And when you go to a four bar scan, you can only do 10 degrees in TWS. Um, if you want the full 60, you need to be in two bar. And this number one here with a circle is waypoint number one. So let's take a look at the next mode. If I press S2 left, we're now in vertical search, sorry, not vertical search, velocity search mode. Now in velocity search mode, uh, the, the axis down the side here is no longer range, it is closure rate, and you have two scales that you can put the, uh, the radar mode into. You've got 1200 knots or 2400 knots. Nothing is actually closing on us that quick, so we'll put it to 1200. Uh, and if I move my my cursor around here, I can see at what point in the scale I'm at by looking at the top left of the cursor. This is 250 knots, 370 knots, you know, 60, you know, all the way up to 1200. So I can see the closure rate of these targets. This is a very useful mode when you're head-to-head with an enemy aircraft and you want to make sure you're only picking up the ones that are hot to you. Uh, but you don't have range information until you lock them up. So if I put my cursor over one of these and I depress, it actually puts me into TWS with that as a bugged target. And I can then, if I want, depress again and go into, oops, actually depress two more times and go into single target track. Uh, and that's going to give me STT lock. Again, S2 depress dumps me out of that. Now, let's go uh, S2 switch left and left again, and we're now doing range while scan. This is the simpler uh, of the, uh, the two main modes between TWS and RWS. This mode will just give us bare returns uh, and doesn't build track files like TWS does. Let's go S2 up to increase the range that we're searching out to, uh, and here we can see that we've got two targets further out. I can depress on one of these, and I've now bugged it, Oh, actually it went straight into STT. Let's come back out of that again and try again. I'm going to depress. Okay, there we go. So what will normally happen is when you first depress on an RWS target, you will get ASM mode. Now, ASM mode is a situational awareness mode. I have bugged that particular target, but I'm still doing a 30 degree scan around the area of the target that I've bugged. This is quite useful because it means I can still see what the other aircraft in the formation is doing. I have information on my bugged target at the bottom right, and I could fire a missile, an S-10 missile at that target. Um, if I depress again uh, on the, sorry, if I depress on the one beside him, I can also go into DTT in exactly the same way that I can with TWS. And S2 left allows me to toggle between those two. Uh, and if I depress S2, I dump the secondary. Uh, and I also have the option of depressing on my first target and getting an STT. It's a little bit tricky. There we go, STT. So I, I'm now just tracking that single target again. And once again, S2 depress, and I dump both of those targets, and I can select a 60 degree scan again. And those are all the standard modes of the radar. We also have a control page where we can actually choose to declutter, and all that's gonna do is it's gonna take away uh, the waypoint information and the horizon line. So that could be quite useful if you've got a cluttered display. 
But uh, apart from that, that is pretty much the operation of the radar in the GF-17. I hope that you all enjoyed that and that you found it useful. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment, and I'll talk to you all next time.